Thank you. Is the the family Cherry? Thank you for the invitation. <clears throat> Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Boa tarde, buenas tardes. It's a pleasure to be here. I came here not to teach you, just to share with you a little bit of our experience in Brazil, in football also. The football come here to Brazil. The no you come here and also to America, to South America. And it'll be okay to, to tell you some history about our country. We are here in Brazil. We are not so good at this one. But here in the South, maybe we can take this, please. Can you take this? This table a little bit? Oh, por favor. Because it doesn't work here properly. No. Okay, I'm here from Brazil, the South Brazil. Brazil is a huge country. And we, we start for a long time. Our pioneer that you see in a few minutes with this technology. The common practice in the 70s was conventional system, plowing, disc burning uh, uh, burning the crop residue, all the things, a lot of erosion, less biological quality, less biodiversity. In the South Brazil also, the, the terrace was staked out for the last 10, 15 years with strong problems with the erosion as well. We have a lot of, a lot of soil losses you can see here in this plot with the conventional system, they plowed uncovered soil. And when you compare it more board to your plowing also we will not tell. We have the common main challenge in Latin America, cropping system, enhanced soil and water degradation process, decreased land productive capacity, low use of soil covering, many cover crops, very poor crop rotation system, improperly nutrient management status, soil organic matter decreasing, increasing production costs mainly due to the amount of external inputs, a lot of products and less process, dynamic process, lack of soil water crop integrated, conservation management system towards sustainable agriculture. Uh, some challenges for sustainable agriculture, we have a lot of acid soils, a tropical and subtropical, the majority tropical, acid soils, cropping intensive, organic capital degradation, lack of cover crops, rotation, and little soil covering. Some problems you start, you can see here, when you take out the, the, the terrace with this water, it, Oops, sorry. It looks like clean water, but it doesn't work well. But you can see here, this is erosion as well. It's not only soil, sediment, but you are losing nutrients. We're losing the soil productive capacity. This is erosion. This is a very common problem. You can see, oops. You can see here, for example, this is a no-till area with terrace, but you can see the 6 to 8 percent of the slope. You can see the loss of potassium. A lot of potassium goes down in this load because the potassium 98% or more is not inside the cell. It's, it's, you, you lose potassium by water into the soil profile on the runoff a lot. Of, so you need to develop some, uh, some tools, some management ways to, to avoid this lose of potassium. Also some problem with your trophization, phosphor, nitrogen, you can see here some intensive use of these inputs caused some problems. In 1972, this man, our pioneer Herbert Marx, he started, came here to England, visited some not two areas, went to America, to United States, to visit some areas, and imported the first, in, 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 in 1972, to South America, he, he imported this machine, this not two machine, he started with this system. And that, that time, the people said that it was a crazy man. And now we are seeing that he, he was correct, not wrong. And also this erosion control of no-till. Our system, conventional, we was changed for no-till system in watershed systematization. is in South Brazil. We have maybe almost 3 million hectares in, in, in Paraná with this program, the systematization of watershed. And also, at that time, with the conventional till, as you see in the top, you can see what's going on now with no-till. Also, these figures show in Brazilian savanna area, six, seven million hectares, you can see what's happened when you have a heavy disc on soybean. This is the tree soil depth. You can see what's happened organic matter in monocrop. When you plow by disc and soybean corn rotation, 
You can see what's happened here. You can see no till when you saw big corn. You can see increase in just six years. We increase the soil organic matter. There's on the soil quality indicators. I mentioned this morning that in the world you have three soil quality indicators all over the world. One is soil organic carbon. Organic, soil organic matter. Another one is earthworm population. And another one is mycorrhiza fungi population. So these three is recognized in all science in all over the world as an indicator of the soil quality. You can see here also is in Paraguay what's happening when you properly develop a system with conventional system. You can see here 0 to 5 centimeters until 15 to 20. The average is 2.5. In no till, five, four years, you can see it goes to 2.7. Seven years, no till, you can see 2.9. And no till, with 10 years, we increase the organic matter to more than 3% of organic matter. So it means that when you develop a suitable no till system, according to the region, according to the farming, the cropping system, we achieve these goals. You can see here. After harvest immediately, you are put in another crop, or another crop crop, or a medium crop. It's in Cerrado area, with very acid soil with the problem, very low organic matter. This was degraded area, we put here, the farmer used here, per minute, and after manage this and put soybean, and all this CO2 goes into the soil. And you can see here, you are losing a lot of this CO2 to the atmosphere, and not promoting the problem with the environmental condition, environmental change with the, the CO2 in the atmosphere. And this is just to say thanks for our pioneers that started with Herbert Marx in 1972. Again, came here to England to see what's going on with no-till. And back to USA, back to Brazil, and start in another non -operator. Now his song is following, and also Mr. Frank Dijkstra. And now Brazil is around 31 to 32 million hectares of the no-till system. There, is no, there are no secrets for the farmers. <coughs> Sorry. So in a short future, we will have shortly 9 billion mouths to feed. What are the future of farming? We must look for sustainable results or sustainable way. We discussed this this morning in a farm said, okay, healthy soil, what's one point important is profitability. Of course, net income is very important. If it's not in sustainable way, this is sustainable for a few years. You must look for this. Do you know very well, you do have here the Rotamstead, the oldest experimental station, the oldest experiment in the world. So what the soil need, what the plant need. So you need to talk with the soil. We need to talk with the plants. You said, but the, the soil talk, yes. He can listen to you. He can tell you about the soil analysis, about the physical, biological, are the, the roots grow, are the, the water infiltration, what the, the holding capacity. Which are the best environmental conditions, conditions for the agriculture? So, just remember you, again, the conservation agriculture, these three principles all over the world that diversify or promote biodiversity with the crop rotation to remain the soil covered as, as much as possible. It so, uh, means focus on soil health, minimum soil disturbance, permanent no-till and living mulch on the surface. This is possible, yes, it is possible in different crops, in different in vegetable, in perennial as well, as the same approach, and also in the annual crops. In order crops is very common. You can see here, and also with the, the, this approach with the soil covering to remain the organic better, to improve the soil life, soil biology. And also to look for these adequate soil attributes. I would like to emphasize this is the area of Brazil in no till, Paraná, we are a state. We are responsible for 23, 24% of the grain in the country. You have 27 states. It's okay, you are understanding my bad English. Yeah. If not, I can talk in Espanol. <laughs> or will in Portuguese. No my problem. A diagnostico, a diagnostic or diagnosis is for me is the most important point in my experience. 61 years, 40 years working cover crops, 40 years working in different places, 49 countries have been visited. In Africa, in Asian countries, Latin America, Europe. This is the point, the key point, because do you know what we have in, your, in front of you? What is your plot that is different from your farm? What do you have in the different aspects? 
We have a lot of, we'll talk a little bit, uh, a few plants. Our experience in Latin America is something in relation with this here in England. How can use the idea or the, the, at least uh, some experience, common experience. You can see here white oat, black oat, white lupin, blue lupin. This is very interesting. This variety is from Iapar. We brought the seeds from South Africa. In a few years, the South African lose all seeds. And you release, you launch the, the Iapar 24 variety of blue lupin that can uh, support 6, 8 degrees Celsius below zero. This is very interesting. And you can see here is canola, you can see lan, or oh, flex, linum nudisitatissimum. You can see radish, radish you brought from Rolf Derps, my, my guru, brought from Germany, 1977. I was there working, you see in a few minutes, the five, six varieties of the, the, the Raphanus sativus to Brazil when you start with the Raphanus, the, our history. You can see the different options, different possibility. Different mixing. At 20 years, I start to work with mixing. Now we are working with two, three, four, five, ten different plants. This is the main, our main contribution for this, this talk for you. This is in 1977. I was here with the, when Rolf Derps in the GTZ, German Preparation Project, brought the, the, the first uh, Raphanus sativus, Rawola Sileta Nova Siletina Slobodinaris 5, Varieties from Germany to start in Brazil. And now a huge area of Abad Raffles is a problem with the sclerotinia. No, you put two kilos in the mixing, there is no problem with the sclerotinia. This, this was in 1977. During this year, I worked with around 158 different species and varieties of cover crops. You can see here the biological tillage with the, the different plants you hear. You can see here is in Paraguay with radish, with uh, oat, black oat different plants in the mixing. You can see here, you are doing the chisel, but the biological chisel, biological. In order to break down the compacted layer, of course, the roots, the hair roots of uh, rye grass, of uh, uh, rye, of oat, in different uh, graminal grasses, will be fine, but you are imitate like it is with the earthworm. This is the mixing cover crops, black oat, common vet, we have no time to talk the advantages of each one, do you know better than us? Here is more 200, 300 years. We have it in China, uh, vet that they're using for three, 400 years. You can see here from Rolf Derps, the no-till planters evolution. So this is, is a need in Paraná. They didn't use, you can see here, this photo is actually from here. You can see this small tree here, you see small tree. After planting here, after six, seven tons, of black oat, Avena strigosa is a wonderful. It was managed by knife roller in the milk stage. You can see here without herbicide to protect the soil surface. And you can see the difference here is this, the weeds, and you can see rye grass and rye, very important cover crops that I also use here a lot. You can see the hairy vet that bring to the soil the amount around similar to 120 kilos of chemical nitrogen per hectare. And if you put this cover crops, it will release during the long time, two, three or more months, according to the crop needs. You see no till corn over every hairy vet and black oat, the mixing in southwest Paraná without herbicide as well. I'm not against herbicide, but if you don't need to use, it's better. I don't against fungicide. If you don't need to use, it's better. We, in our health, maybe you need some uh, uh, some uh, pills or some medicaments, some drugs. If you don't need, it's better. You can see here the blue looping, EAPR 24. You can see here also from EAPR, uh, this is field pea, very nice, that you use here for more than 200 years. You can use as a forage, you can use in mixing cover crops. You can see vetch, black oat, ryegrass. You can see here black oat, field pea, vetch. All these we are using a lot of areas. We have, of course, some big farmers that will show you late, and you have farmers that are used this year, 3,200 hectares with cover crops. Why? Because the other way was not efficient, was not enough to achieve a sustainable way, way and also a profitability in the field. You can see also Latirus, Chiclin P, 
also interesting to use. You can see also canola. And you can see the knife roller. The knife roller was developed maybe f around 40 years. It's in our institute and now it's also in America here. It's very, there are different kind of this. You can see this photo is one month ago. You can see this is a farm 1,600 hectares, 200 hectares with this, with mixed cover crops. Here's a pre millet, some uh, brachiaria, and also with uh, legume, crotillaria spectabilis. You can see this, a wonderful uh, equipment to manage to flat down all the, the, the living plants on the soil surface in order to avoid the loss of moisture to have the, 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 the soil shadow, we more to keep the moisture in order to improve the soil life. Black oat managed by knife loader at grain milk stage. You can achieve 95, 98% without use herbicide many times. It's better. This is in Paraná, 2002. This is a cooperative with farmers. We are here with a, in a few days with this mixed black oat, hairy vet, reddish, white lupin, rye, and field pea. Wonderful results. We are slashing here, 40, 60 centimeters. In order to have a regrowing, you can uh, achieve oh, 30, 40, 45 days more. And when you, these plants are in the growing stage, it goes, the root grows, grows more. And also you can have more adding dry, uh, drain and, and dry mass later on. And you can see here the soybean, the, 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 the oat, the wheat, and the... Inverno, mais inverno. The corn in the winter, and also here, oat, radish, and, and pea mixing cover crops. Or say, or means try in our condition, our tropical condition, remain the soil as more as possible covered by mulch. If it's possible, more different species, more biodiversity. To promote this, to promote crop rotation. Of course, there are so many crop rotations, so many different just in our state. We have 230, 240 different soil kinds of soil. So it's so big, the different possibilities that you have and you develop together with the farmers. Oops. So the rotation recommended must be regionally adapted according to climate, soil, sites, farm, infrastructure, farmer aims, technically effective low, Ecologically equilibrated, economically viable. Of course, this is very important. We don't talk every time, but economically, if it's not economically, who is, is do? As important for the soil, important for the microorganisms, what important for the farm, for the farmer. So this is must to be together. And you can see here, very short, with 45, 50 days, with buckwheat, with per millet, with radish. Two kilos of radish, six to eight kilos of per millet, 20 kilos of buckwheat per hectare. We have a wonderful, you must you spread this, you can over, over casting, over broadcasting, the seeds by plane or by machine. You can have a wonderful soil cover like this for animal, you also for soil. And after you can manage by knife roller or herbicide, whatever. You can see here the sun hemp, Crotalare juncia, we have 200,000 hectares in Sao Paulo state, mainly for the sugar cane. You can see the wheat without herbicide, just Knife roller, it was planted here, this wheat, and it has the equivalent of 60 or more kilos of nitrogen per hectare. And no till. You can see soybean over sowing with per millet. Before harvesting the soybean, 30 days. After soybean, before harvesting, around one month, we broadcast the seeds. You can see where this is on farm 13,000 hectares. This is for Mormons in Bahia. In Minas Gerais, is 35,000 hectares. This farm, 13 farming, 13,000 farming, and also the animal can can use this for forage for animals, for feeding animals, once or twice. You can see here the mixing cover crops: per millet, finger millet, spectabilis, two crotaladas, legume, radish, buckwheat. So different families. These farms they use around almost 1,000 hectares with wonderful results in two and a half, three months for the next crop. This is very new. This is last March, a, a farmer. I work with a lot of farmers. Mr. Wilson farmer in this town. Problems with Fusario, we have a lot of problems. Because the problem in the 70s was the soil erosion. The problem was the loose fertility. 
Now is soil conservation. Now, <coughs> monocrop, not so increased the organic matter, problem with root disease, problem with nematodes, one of the most, the, the strongest problem in challenging for our farmers is pratilencus. Is the main, just to have an idea, in Mato Grosso they have six, 9.6 million hectares soybean, 80% with a strong problem pratilencus. Because the weeds, 80, 85% of the weeds host this nematode. And this nematode attack soybean, wheat, maize, pasture, all break area. So the majority of the crops is susceptible. And this farmer has this problem. We discuss with them. We put some cover crops. Sorry, this is wrong here. We put some biological products here. And you can see here the trichoderma. This is the, 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 the photo here, not so good. But this is so green. No, this is green. This is sign of that soil was totally colonized with bioactivation with the trichoderma. Decrease the fusarium, increase around 500 kilos, half ton of soybean the first year. The second year, almost 600 kilos. So we increase just because we have some problem with disease. A fungicide doesn't work in that condition, but put biological products, cover crops, bioactivation. You live for this condition to an equilibrium with the attributes chemical, physical, and biological. You can see also in coffee plantation, very common in Brazil, they use it here with mixing buckwheat with some crotalarias, some cowpeas, and other cover crops. This is sugar cane. This is very interesting here, cover crops, in this case, uh, crotalaria with sugar cane. Sugar cane, you have very quickly comments about this. I take some water. Many times, many books. We have a lot of books in the world, you know, better than me. I have 23 books published in Brazil. Maybe more 20 uh, chapter of the books here in, in, in Europe, in, 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 in the United States, States, and also some in Australia. But if you look for the concept of the organic, soil organic matter, the majority of the books, majority, they don't mention one very important aspect. I'll tell you about this aspect that I learned, not for a long time, maybe less four or five years. One farmer, 50 hectares in Franca, Sao Paulo State, the people from the oldest uh, IAC, Agronomic Institute from Sao Paulo, put an experiment in his farm for 20, 12 years with sugar cane. No barn, no plow, no till in sugar cane. Okay? 18 to 21 tons of dry mass of sugar cane per year, one harvest per year. What's happened with these 20 tons per year without touching the soil with 48, 49% of the clay? After 12 years, every year, taking the soil exactly the same places, what's happened with the organic matter, soil organic matter? Nothing. 12 years, one year, increase 0 T, 0 3, another year 0 4 below. So the end of the 12 years, the soil organic matter was the same. As I said, what's happened? And many doctors, many literature, what's happened? They check, one friend said, Professor Antonio Teixeira, this soil is living soil. É un solo vivo. Este solo está vivo. It's a living soil. He check, what does mean living soil? This is the point. Later on, not that day, they took many soil analysis, many evaluation. They saw that there was compaction. There is a lot of residue of sugar cane. And some organism in the web was killed. The total amount of the organic matter, the dry, dry mass, more than 20 tons per year was transformed in CO2 released to the atmosphere, not transformed in humus into the soil. In the point, the capital point, the key point to transform the humus to increase the organic matter is microbiota, is microorganism. You might to improve the soil life in order to increase the organic matter. Doesn't matter you have 10 tons per year here, maybe you have five tons here. In five, 10 years, maybe here you can have more soil organic matter. Because the microorganism, the soil life is most important, the amount of cover crops, in my experience. 40 years working in this. So the point is, we must to improve soil microorganisms. This is the key point. You can see here, you can plant over the, the, the white loop in some, in this case with maize, corn. This photo also, with our friend Japanese, 3,000 hectares here in Goiás State, Savannah area, using this rotation with cover crops, with mixing crops. You can see here, 3,000 hectares, Goyas, Yamashita family with this plant that came from Africa, 
very strong to decrease nematoid population, then the millet, the millet, the penicillin are the best in the world to recycling potassium. It goes one, two, three meters and bring on the soil surface the potassium because the potassium is easily leached. The boron is easily leached. The sulfur is easily leached. The nitrate is easily leached. We need to look for these crops. The champion in the world is penicillin for potassium. The, for sulfur, the brassicae, the radish, the canola, the, the turnip, mostaza, mustard, all these plants was the most efficient in phosphor nitrogen by mainly to recycling the sulfur. You can see here Crotillaria brevifloria, you can see very, very one, one meter, 80 centimeters, but it goes down two meters, two and a half meters of the roots. This is very important what it's doing into the soil profile. You can see these mixes. Uh, Crumbia abyssinica is another reddish, uh, sorry, is another cruciferi, also very important in recycling sulfur. Uh, Capin coracana, Eleusini coracana, very important in Africa, in Asia. Six to eight tons of roots. It can take nitrogen. Ah, it's not legume. Yeah, but azospirillum. Azospirillum, bacteria that can take over the free organism and can bring 60, 70 kilos of nitrogen into the system. You can see this mix in the black oat, hairy vetch, buckwheat, pyramid, and radish. Wonderful area with the farmers. Very recently, this photo, this two, three weeks ago. You can see here, sorry, it's in Portuguese, trigo morisco. This is the Bleu Sarrasin in France. They have planted this almost 2,000 years with tunisol, with, with some flour together. This is the, the, for the pancake. In Chinese, they use for the noodles. The Japanese for soa, for the, 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 the pasta, macaroni, the very thin uh, noodles, all right? This is very important. No, very common, they grow very, very quick, very strong phosphorus recycling, strong phosphorus recycling the word. Buckwheat, Fagopyrus culentum, very important plant. You can broadcast, you can use. We have two varieties in Yapar, in Brazil, from our institute. And here radish, you hear millet, and here uh, white, white oat. No gluten, trigo morisco. Blessa Hassan, there is no, or the back wheat, there is no gluten. You can see here, also another kind of knife roller. You can see here, citrus, we've covered crops together, it's very recently. This is mixing black oat, radish, rye, common veg, back wheat. Many of these you can use here, just slashing, to regrowing in between one month or more. You can see different, all these areas, are, this is two weeks ago, Saturday two weeks ago, in a big, big few days, more than 60, 70 farmers. We have in these farmers, pyramid, radish, buckwheat, crumby, crotillaria, and blackwood. All this together. This farm is almost 2,000 hectares. This farm are increasing four years, Mr. Ademar Bedin. Increasing 8 to 10 bags, 400, 500 kilos of soybean. Decreasing 35, 36 percent the cost, production cost. Increasing 30, 35 percent in the crop yield. Using biological products, using biotivation, decrease the, the root disease, decrease the nematodes, improve the soil quality, the soil profitability, the net income. After what? After the good diagnosis. This is the point. In each soil, each farm, each region, there is maybe a problem with silty, there is a problem with crusting, another one is a problem with calcium in soil depth, the root cannot go down. Maybe the problem is sulfur, maybe the problem is compaction, the problem is lack of soil life, microorganisms. So you need to know what you have, what do you do? This is the point, the key point to advancing. You see here this soybean, sorry, this bean in Otil, you can see the grapes in the South Brazil, also used in cover crops, rye grass, hairy vetch, very common. This is tobacco nutil, also in Santa Catarina, in South Brazil. You can see here citrus is perennial soybean. You can see 1,100 hectares this cover crop cocktail. This is five kilos of sun rep, juncia, five kilos of coleoca, five kilos of spectabilis, five kilos, 20 kilos the total per hectare with the pre millet. The farmer did 120 hectares and after. So this is a big farmer. This man with his family is about 9.3 thousand, uh, thousand hectares. 
And they use maybe 2,500 hectares per year with the cover crops. Rotating this because bring the health soil, bring the decrease of soil disease, soil nematodes, and improve in a sustainable way with reduction, reduction costs. You see finger millet, more than six ton per hectare, he providing 40 or 60, per, uh, 60 kilos of nitrogen by azospirillium in this grass. You can see this uh, brachy area, the amount of roots increasing, improving the soil properties. You can see here black oat, pigeon pea, white lupin, common, common vet. All these bring a lot of nitrogen. Citric acid too also, lupin is, is a millionaire plant. Two thousand years more. We are working with lupin for a long time. Do you know there is more than a thousand variety of lupin? White lupin, blue lupin, and lupinus luteus, yellow lupin was the three more important. Dr. Ana Maria Primavera said, Admir, in Germany last century, yellow lupin, and rye, and centeo, and rye, secali cereali, saved our country. So there is plant, unbelievable the result that you can use. You can see the, the radish, you can see the finger millet, you can see these strong roots. So the notice system will promote higher biodiversity. Roots effects into the soil profile. You can see also the same roots here. And also, a lot of this is not roots. The majority of this is hyphos the fungi. So the mycorrhiza fungi. I don't know here if it's so important for you. But for us, you see Brazil is a huge country. In, in, in South America, we don't have a mycorrhiza that you can apply, you have results. They applied for 36 studies. You apply the whole organism, kill, eat this mycorrhiza. If you can use some bioactivator, okay. So, but the result, you know, these three years, last three years, the mycorrhiza is the microorganism more studied in the world, in the world. Why? The forest, the pasture, the majority of the crops, high response of the population of mycorrhiza. You can see the roots doing the job, you can see the earthworms, you can see here in Africa. This is not roots, this is our fungi, mycorrhiza fungi, after 17 years with no-till, is in Paraná in our state. So this fungi colonize, and it can increase 80% or almost 100% the, the ectomycorrhiza, and this to promote more water, to recycling, borrow, and to transform phosphorus, release the phosphorus, because you know, in our soils, trop soils and tropical and subtropical, the amount of phosphorus, if you apply some phosphate, in two days, 65 or 70 percent of this phosphate disappeared. The clay take it and protect it, not release for the crops. You need to use plants. There is no product for that. You need to use the microorganisms. You need to use the mycorrhiza in order to release this phosphorus available for the crops. You can see the glomalin, a lot of uh, scientific articles in the world. This is like a photo. This is what's after died the roots. The roots come until here, more or less. All of this, this is tension. This is fungi. This affects a lot of nutrients here that the no till comes here, the, the crop roots can go and can take available nutrients that can live in your, in your soil, in your soil profile. This is glomalin. Look for glomalin, you see, in America and Europe, a lot of different scientific articles. So the microorganisms, so different size, microflora, microfauna, mesofauna, all of them, there are so important. You can see here, soil, soil microorganisms, just a small amount of soil, 100 grams of soil, you can see, send, 10,000 million billion bacteria. It is a real photo. And you can see here just this small amount of soil, more than 50 kilometers of fungi hyphas. It's almost unbelievable, but this is true. You must promote this. But we are killing, we are talking about Brazilian farmers, maybe the English farmers that are doing that. In Brazil, we are killing every day because we are plowing. We are using a lot of fungicide, use it for soybean because the roast is coming. You use some treat, seed treatments. And you are killing all these microorganisms. We are using a lot of, many times, herbicide. One of the most killer, the excessive use of herbicide. And you can see the soil management on conventional system, almost without life. You can see here when you have a no-till with cover crops, with crop rotation, improvement 
of the soil microbiota. In their terms, in their impact on soil shatters, channels and galleries, aeration, because this morning you said the, the penetration of the air, the, the soil life, because the roots also, they need oxygen, not only the, 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 the shoot, no, but also in the roots. This is a Brazilian no-till federation of no-till and irrigation in Brazil. And you can see here the earthworms in their impact on soil cast for excrements. Because this, the earthworm is one of the soil quality indicators. Another one is soil organic matter. Another one is mycorrhiza. If you go all over the world, it asks you, what about your soil in our county? Oh, you come. I come from England. I come from Brazil. From a very poor area. What about your soil? What means organic matter? What means mycorrhiza population? What means earthworm population? Indicators of the soil quality. So, my friends, we must urgently promote plant and soil biotivation in our farms. We need to look which cover crops that they can to break down the, the same crops, the sequencing of crops to promote biodiversity, to promote different roots, different exudates, different promotion of different organisms to improve this and to achieve the equilibrium because the modern material knows very well what it means. You can see here, this is a few days in a farm, here a professor of farm, these are doing PhD here. You can see a lot of this soil cover crops rotation in this piece of Zanata. You can see a lot of different mycorrhiza very recently. You can see this, the crop yield is 42 different aspects. For coffee plantation, it's 52. It's not only chemical, only soil plow, not only fertilizer or pesticide, it's 42. 42 different aspects together, you make one crop produce properly. And for coffee, they found 52 different aspects. So the soil organic matter is a commander. Eh? Like uh, all yours in England is a hurricane. You know, it's the killer for the go. No, Guerrero, yeah. Guerrero, the Peru, se fue, eh? adios. E maybe Brazil tonight, we don't know. Serbian will be very difficult. So this soil organic matter is a commander with the chemical, with biological, and physical. You see, in our state, the problem is here, physical. 42% of the rainfall that goes on to our soil, Paraná soils, the scientists said the plant there is no access. Now the problem, our problem is not chemical. And many times we are putting, putting nutrients and more nutrients. It's not the problem. It's not the question. If you have, you have the minimum law, it has excessive law. If you have more nutrients than available, it's not. I told you this morning, the, 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 the short discussion, for example, the chloride, potassium chloride. I saw it last year, last year in America. A big farmer stand up and said, my friend, stop to use the too much the chloride. The chloride of the potassium. Potassium chloride, stop it, because chloride is used in swimming pool to kill bacteria. You are killing our microorganisms when you have excessive. We have in Brazil areas with 200, 300, 300 parts per million of potassium in the farmer or the sellers. Put more, put uh, 150s, 90 kilos of K2O. Don't need nothing. If you put nothing for five, for five years, you're producing more. Seven, ten bags for 500 hectares, for 500 kilos. So the excessive of nutrients, we need the equilibrium. Equilibrium will be the point. It's not easy to achieve. So the soil quality, the soil productivity, all this together, biology, chemistry, physical, food quality, environmental quality, in soil health is the take all of this together. Another point is soil being, for example, here, just with the inoculation, Bradys are zobium, the recommendation one or two doses, we're using 10 doses. We are achieving five, four, five, six bed, 300 kilos more. We need to improve the soil life. Two doses of azospirinum per hectare, wonderful results. You can achieve four, four and a half, five tons per hectare of soybean. You can see here, the time is going quickly. I have 15 minutes. Huh? Five more. Yeah, okay. Okay, I go quickly. You can see here the results. When you have the, 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 the mixing, you achieve more the results. You can see here, but not so good here, but here in Paraná, in Rio Grande do Sul, when you put the, only the cover crops with a fallow, you can see nine tons of maize, of corn, 
when you put the cover crop, when you put the mix in, this is radish, common veg, rye, white lupin, and no oat. We achieved 12 tons. This is a farm condition. We are present last year in the, in the International uh, Agriculture Conservation. So wonderful, you can have more than 50% of the crop yields. You can see here also the increased cover crops, the production of the crops, the integration livestock. You can see many different crops. I have no time more, I will finish. You can see here our experiment, the 32 years is the second in Brazil. Has 28 scientific articles, eight international articles. And also 11 theses here, six from master, four PhD and post PhD in this experiment, 32 is the second. I was working with this on 28 years. And you can see here, and you can see here the largest maybe group of the production of grains the world are looking for this. You can see 275,000 hectares of soybean, 120,000 hectares of maize, 120,000 cotton. This family, Sheffer Meiji, was with us looking for this approach because they have some problems. They have a lot of airplanes. They, have, they travel all over the world, but the problem is not product. We need to develop a system with the process, not only with the products. And you can see the nematodes, the big problem that you have. But you have no time to discuss. You can see the main cover crops, biological products, no till including cover crop rotation. And you can see quickly in the world the cover crops. In Pennsylvania, Steve Groff with our, my friend, my guru, Rolf Derpsch, is in Germany John now. I started him at that time with technician in 1977. And you can see Gay Brown, he started with the cover crops and mixing. 11 years ago in Salina, Kansas. Now is one of the most famous in the North America using the mixing with this old 4GP, Harry Vett turned reddish red clover. Using cowpea, soybean, permitted, prosomitted, reddish red, and sunflower, buckwheat together. You can see what the American farmer are doing to promote biodiversity, to promote soil covering. And you hear your friend Franz Yetman in, in South Africa using knife roller, using Harry Vetch using Serenella in using triticale as cover. A lot of this may be one of the most famous production of the organic wine and exporting in the world. I was by a few two days with this man. And you can see here in America, Alan Flosafop, very famous scientist. We are visiting this black hole from Eapar 61. We sent to America, to United States, like you sent many things for us. They tested very low temperature. Now they develop one variety. It's cultivar soil saver that you can support 10, 12 degrees below zero. It's a black water, wonderful, that are working very nicely in America. You can see in France, my friend Frédéric Thomas, we also brought there to France this approach with the mixing cover crops. You can see the melange, they call all these cover crops, the soil analysis. And you can see what they do in the, whole, the, the knife roll in front of, the, to manage the, 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 the... You can see here the French farmers, Lamp grazing and also put into the soil. You can see some flower buckwheat. You can see the camelina also used in Brazil. You can see some rotation in France, but there is no time. You can see in Samara, they are playing Samara. We also use Gottlieb and Don Rekoski there in the World Congress with the no-till. You can see yellow sweet clover. They are doing well, but here not doing well. This is the soil of the Chernozem, one of the most rich in the, in the world. The low temperature, but you're applying, you are losing organic matter. 40, 45% of organic matter natural. But they are changing this now. And here in Africa, feed the soil to feed the people. This France, this uh, Italian cooperation, and also it was there many times to promote this in Africa. This is in Argentina, our friend Peretti also promoting. Argentina, very strong, you know, till. This is the third, you see here, red or crimson clover that you have a lot of here. You can see our friends from FAO, his hairy vet, they have hairy vet in China that can support 14 degrees below zero. And also is in Korea, this is in Korea and FAO. You can see the Rodeo Institute, the knife roller. This is cover crop, I'm here, this is Ukraine. I've been four times Ukraine, the AgroSoyuz, one of the second largest company, agriculture company in Ukraine that I use the cover crops. You can see here, I don't know what is here in Russia, but the cover crop species in Ukraine, different that you promote, you can see here the knife roller there. You can see in Portugal, we have Yellow Looping, the International Congress. 
You can see also the Faselia here in, in, in here close in Germany. And you can see this experiment, my friends. Take quickly cover crops in conventional. An experiment condu conducted seven years with no till. Is it happen in spirit 100 years in conventional? They achieve the same soil properties. Compare seven years when you do, do the rotation and no till. When they have one 100 years in conventional, they did in seven years. This is data from our friend from Alabama, Dr. Wayne Reeves. And you can see in Australia, no till few days that was there with the, the, the people. This is one of the oldest, more than 30, 35 years with no till, Mr. Larson. In America, this is one of the Kentucky that went to Brazil, one of the, 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 the first, the pioneer in America. This is our friend Shiro Miyazaka, the father, who was living with us last year, 93, 94 years, working with cover crops in O'Till, and said there is no miracle in the nature. The own nature is a miracle. The success depends on effort, creativity, and persistence. And also this is our, our friend, this is cotton, this is guava, in Paraguay, in an organic way, producing the cover crops. You can see the coffee. You can see our friend very recently. A lot of mix. This is, this, my friend, is 130 years, the coffee. The Japanese are paying, are paying. One coffee uh, bag, 50, 60 kilos. Now in Brazil, is around 100 pounds. They paid, they paid here 1,000 pounds. Because this is 130 years, there is no pesticides. As they bring to Japan and here also, from here, from England, very nice coffee. And this is people that came here last, last month, here in the festival here in England. They are sporting for 31 countries, the coffee with quality. They are here organic. And here in the group last week, last Friday, this is a group of the pilot, Pedro uh, Denise, one of the pilot of Formula One. 12 years with, with organic, with no-till, with cover crops that we're working together. So, to finalize, cover is a biological primary enhanced no-till soil performance. Biologic chemistry, physics, soil health, cover crops are a domino effect on soil ecosystems. Si sí, se puede. Yes, we can. Se puede, ah, no, not possible. Yes, possible. You can see here this, this tree, and this in the savanna area. What kind of agriculture are you promoting? This is in France. This is a photo three weeks ago. It's the forest, natural forest. A lot of organisms, a lot of mycorrhizae, natural. We must to follow the, our modern nature, the modern land that has a lot of, to explain to us, soil biodiversity is clearly fundamental. Soil has soil reasons. Information you need, recognition widespread farms about soil organisms, soil biodiversity is the very for success. CA Marie Bartz is the postdoc in earthworm, is the daughter of uh, Mr. Bartz, our pioneer in O2. And to finalize, this is from Rolf Terps. Cover crops integrate with livestock, with tree, with grains, no till quality system, crop rotation, life quality of farmers. And I add this, soil and plant bioactivation. We must look for to increase quickly the amount of soil life, the, the microorganisms. And thank you so much. Mucho obrigado, muchas gracias. This is my, sorry for the time. Thank you so much. Uh, I don't know if anybody else is completely exhausted, but I am. Um, and one thing, we can, we can take two things away from that uh, uh, 45 minutes. One is that farmers around the world take terrible pictures and the other is um, not his pictures, just the pictures of the farmers themselves. Um, and the other is just experiment with cover crops. You've just got to keep on experimenting because you keep on trying and you, keep, and you find out which ones suit your ground. Some really very interesting stuff, Adamir. Thank you very much indeed. Um, he's prepared to answer some questions if you speak very slowly. Um, here comes the roving mic. Wait till the mic and um, let, can you tell us who you are? I'm Carolyn Heyman. Um, I'd, I'd like to ask you about the global stress. Can you go slowly? Because my... Please. I'd like to ask you your perspective on how conservation agriculture is spreading across the world. It seems like in Brazil it's...
captured a bigger percentage here? of the f of the farming than here in the UK, maybe. But how do you see it on a global stage when we have the Gates Foundation just promoting more fertilizer, more three-year approved seeds in Africa? How can conservation agriculture really spread? Yeah, this is a okay. This is a really a, a strong challenge in many places. We know that there are many times the, the water table here is higher. Do you have one climate different? You you need to warm up the soil. We need to refresh the soil our condition. So in Africa and other points, so different. Yeah, this is about the Gate Foundation. I I I, I did some talks about them, but. We don't know really uh, who are managing this because sometimes we are promoting tractor, we are promoting disc carrying. We know this is are destroying the soil, we are promoting erosion. This is a, the strongest problem. We must to avoid, stop the erosion, and not this, and to promote more. But many times, or so I, I, I participate, I'm a, I'm, I'm a consultant on FAO, World Bank, European Union, uh, Austrian and German cooperation. I've been many, more than 100, uh, missions in different countries, 49 countries have been visited, and the condition is totally different, but I think many times the approach is not the approach, not this, the, the real diagnostic. Many times you don't need lime, you don't need phosphorus, you have a lot. I was one month ago, for example, in Paraguay, they have one zone, it's very, very high nutrients, they have four or five hundred parts per million of phosphorus, six, seven, eight hundred potassium. They you plant sixty years, six zero, sixty years without putting any chemical. So cannot put any chemical there. So this is very uh, in many times you saw some results, some uh, focus, some approach. It's not disintegrated the old three attributes. Maybe we don't need so strong uh, mold or plow. Maybe the no-till planter in that condition, we need first go to a, a, a strip tillage, we go to something to take the, the, the straw in, in order to warm. So there is so many things. The, 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 the French people develop like knife roller to, to break the, the ice, to promote the smell quickly in order to warm up two, three, five days before in order to put this. I think this, the, this real diagnostic, diagnosis, this is very, for me, this is in America. I've been 39 times in America. I've, I, I did my master in Aberdeen, here in Scotland, 93, 94. With my wife is here, she's here. And also, yeah, I did my PhD in Londrina, one year in KSU, Kansas State University. And also in French, and then in Grignon, and then in you know, people from Nira. We learn a lot, but the knowledge, the experience is so dynamic. Every day you are learning. Why are you learning this discussion today with farmers? I discuss with farmers from Germany, discuss with different people from Spain, from Portugal, from England. So this is a, a huge thing that in, every day we have a lot of learn. I teach a little bit and learn more. So, but this approach is very important. And sometimes they are in, in our uh, thinking in, in a not so better way. It's okay, for, exa for example, I'm not organic 100%. I work with organic farmers, small, medium, big for organic farmers. But I also work with these people. 500 hectares, 500,000 hectares, half a million hectares, one family. is the, 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 maybe the largest in the world. But now they are looking for biological products. Trichoderma, they are looking for bacillus. They are looking for cover crops mixing. They are looking for other things that they didn't. But they failed many times. So this is important to see. If you want good, clean water, you go where the clean water is there. You're looking for it. Nobody knows everything. We know a little bit. Yeah, thank you. Julius Joel. Um, you mentioned earlier, way back early in your presentation, about an effect of radish cover crops on Sleritinia? Can you repeat what it said in radish? You talked earlier about the effect of radish cover crops on Sleritinia. Sleritinia, is that yeah. right? Yes, because the cruciferae in general, well, radish, raphanus sativus, 
brassica, different brassica, Napos, uh, Rapa, Nigra, all of them, canola, uh, cranberry, all of them are susceptible to sclerotinia, sclerotiorum. But when you put in the mixing, because why import radish? The roots, the importance of the recycling sulfur, cycling sulfur, phosphorus, nitrogen, and you learn the last five, six, seven years that you cannot put 20 kilos per hectare. Sorry, we are not kilo per hectare, but it's the, uh, no, we use two kilos per hectare. It's more than enough. In the mixing with rye, with triticale, with oat, with black oat, with ready, with uh, the common vet, hurry vet, lupin, or crimson clover, six, seven, it's a wonderful. There is nothing with the, the, the sclerotina, sclerotinia, because they're not, not from the sclerotinia that need to come to the, the, the flower to complete the cycle. Nuts happen, and you have, or before flowering, you manage. So there is many things that you can use. That plant, that is, it can contribute to increase the, some root disease, but you manage properly, it doesn't. Because there is no one plant, in my opinion, maybe there are, but I don't know, that it can, has nitrogen, phosphorus, increase all good properties. No, some things, but when you put together, you are imitating, you are the, 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 the nature, the biodiversity, the all heterogeneity of the, uh, the nature. Okay. Thank you so much, my friends. It's a pleasure to be here. One Not more. yet. Oh, there are. One more. One more. Tem mais, mais perguntas, ok. Excellent presentation. Mm -hmm. I was just um, wondering, in your opinion, uh, as the introduction of round and ready cropping in America help speed up the adoption of no-till in South America. Sir, just, just slowly, I don't understand. But introducing in America, what? Of, of Roundup Ready cropping in South America, corn and beans, did ha that help speed up the adoption of the take-up of no-till in South America? In soybean, you say? In soybean and corn, Roundup Ready soybean and corn, did that help the adoption of no-till quicker in South America? Yeah, the question is, in South America, mainly in Brazil, we have the largest area now is more than 32 million hectares in no-till because the farmers, sorry, the farmers was, uh, were dying. The, the, the convention will not pay the bills. They are abandoning the, the farm. There is one way, no-till. Our friends from FAO, seems uh, Joseph Kingsley and the other friends here, go to live in other, no. That the problem with the Brazil, the Brazilian farmers, there is no other way. If they go this, is continue to be farming. If not, it's a failure. And the production cost every year is higher, higher, and higher. Why? Because the inputs is high. The seeds is very high. If the farmer not produce more, if you don't increase the soil cap uh, potential uh, productive capacity, this is not with products. We learned that it is not products, not fertilizer, a fungicide, insecticide. No, it is not. Just one comment. In, in, in South Brazil, one lady did his PhD thesis, almost 4,500 soil analysis from different farmers in Rio Grande do Sul, wheat, soybean, and corn producers. She concluded all the data, all the producers, all the crop yields, these three crops, wheat, corn, and soybean. Mr. Do, uh, Dr. Nicolodi. She concluded that 78 to 80%, 80% was not the nutrients the responsible for the crop yields. It's other things, moisture, soil life, earthworms, soil quality, biologic aspect, not nutrients. So this farmer many times are putting too much, they produce less. There is a minimum law, but there is another law that you put too much, you produce less. So this equilibrium is the point that this farm are doing, but now soybean and corn, soybean and corn are also not sustainable. Like in America, soybean and corn, many areas, is not increased the annual net uh, carbon. It's not positive carbon at the end of the year. We visited a farmer in Parada that used 22 applying, spraying during the year. They used seven times Roundup glyphosate. He used eight insecticide, they used it for fungicide, 22. I said, you are killing your soil. I'm sorry, maybe you are killing together. And the guy said, like this, a farmer. And the first time, I was wrong. And he gave her hand and said, thanks, Vladimir. You are the first person that came in my farm and said what I need to listen. I need to change. And he started to change, to put more 
plants, more crops to think in this. You don't need harvesting to plant. You can broadcast one month before harvesting to take some moisture to produce food, forage, integration, many other possibilities to decrease the pest because the whole nature is in equilibrium. We must look for this equilibrium with organisms, with plant, with crops, water, and so on. Every question I am talking, almost <laughs> talk again, sorry. Italiani, tutti buona gente. <laughs>